Welcome to V2 of Enigma's Cold War server. I've been so excited about documenting this new version and over the next few weeks I hope we'll be able to highlight some of the new cool features that have been added and take a look at what's changed for helicopter warfare. As you saw moments ago, Makop can sky up north flipped hands and became a red airbase. This segment of the front line with Makop, Sector 39, the one that we're at, and Sochi to our south have proven to be a difficult one to push through since the server has been updated. Today though, we're going to take our MI-8 hip loaded up with defensive machine guns and three squads of standard troops to attack enemy formations high up on the mountains varying between 8,000 and 9,000 feet of elevation. Thanks to some amazing low altitude reconnaissance by others, we've uncovered an excellent and rare opportunity to destroy many enemy units in a relatively quick manner. More on that later after we get underway. For now, we'll get started up and take a look south near Sochi to see how the air war is stacking up. Deterred by the numerical disadvantage, the F-5 opts to take the fight to Sochi Air Base, briefly causing chaos to those on the ground. Back at the FARP we're all set to go and as we depart we're joined by an MI-24 Hind. We'll end up seeing this unit again operating in the same area as us at our target. With all the probing Blue 4 air attacks south of us near Sochi, the Hind is some welcome cover as we transit in.
After the Saber maneuver kill, this MiG-21 suffers unknown damage and is forced to perform a crash landing at Sochi. Thankfully, the air battles so far seem to gravitate towards Sochi in the south and Makop to the north. For us in the middle sector 3-9, we've got tons of cover from the mountainous terrain as we make our way towards the target area. As I alluded to earlier, the target area is a rare opportunity where the terrain affords us protection and concentration of forces means we'll be able to destroy a large amount of enemy relatively quickly. Our routing takes us along the various deep valleys that are a predominant feature in sector 3-9. In the northeast corner of the target area, there is a particular valley that cuts west and unveils a very deep valley running north to south. It is in this middle valley where we will land troops and under the cover of the terrain, be immune to ground fire. The high walls of the narrow valley surrounded almost on all sides also means that it's difficult for jet aircraft to get in and threaten us. All we have to do is just get there safely, but lurking not too far off is an A-10 on the hunt for ground forces and helicopters like ours. Further north, Red Fighter aircraft are attempting to push west of Makop to establish a buffer so that enemy jets are beaten back before they can threaten the newly acquired Red Airfield. Mortally wounded, the F-5 bestows a parting gift to one of the three attackers before finally going down. We are now at the target area and the hind who departed with us has started working on the most eastward troop concentration. As planned, we're heading through the western valley on the northeast edge, then cutting south into the valley which is home to our landing zone.
A new feature of V2 has been the inclusion of infrastructure targets. These targets affect the flow of supplies to the front line and contextually they fit the theme. They may be cargo ships, trains, or supply convoys on bridges, and are uncovered by high altitude reconnaissance in jets. For the helicopter side, if you're able to carry recon troops, you'll be able to uncover infrastructure targets 25 kilometers away. Unfortunately, HIPs are not permitted to carry recon troops at the moment, but we're able to carry special operations forces to raid these targets, and it's absolutely something we'll do in the future. The first air assault is a resounding success. Because of the close proximity of our landing zone to multiple troop concentrations, we're able to destroy a few camps at once. The HIP can carry a maximum of 14 troops, but in practice when you're doing air assaults, you'll carry three squads of four. With these 12 soldiers, you'll be able to destroy 12 units. And new in V2, your deployed infantry no longer spawn randomly around the target. They will remain in the proximity of the original landing zone. This is a welcome change because in the past it was very frustrating when a target area wouldn't be completely destroyed and the troops would randomly wait for a pickup within the line of sight of the remaining enemy. This left them unrecoverable. Now as helicopter pilots we can plan for how we want to drop and pick up our troops. And for now we're going to pick these guys up and do a short jump across the valley to another set of targets. Another major change with helicopters in V2 is how troops deploy out of the aircraft. As you can see, soldiers now deploy out of the aft end of the hip. In V1, they would make a ring around the helicopter, and I was not a fan of the ring because it hampered your ability to roll forward and get some extra efficiency for takeoff. You'd simply collide with the soldiers up front if you weren't high enough. These new changes, however, mean that it's extra important for you to mind your tail rotor and how the aircraft settled on uneven terrain. It's now possible that troops can clip the tail rotor and die. We're now going to head out and orbit as we wait for our assault to conclude. Meanwhile, up north at Maycop, a Huey begins an assault of their own.
of their attack is complete and we finish off two more camps. By now it's five down with two more to go. The final pair of enemy camps is south of us in higher terrain massed by clouds. We'll see it on the left in the next shot. This pickup was slightly tricky. I was holding a higher up position to get a good look at where the troops were and to try and spot a good area to land. Ultimately I concluded there wasn't any where I could see fully touching down that would not risk damage to the aircraft or death and injury to the ground forces. I decided to opt for a hover pickup. First we'll orient the aircraft in a way that we can cyclic forward and to the right easily to build speed down slope if there was an emergency. And then from there it's just a simple slow descent until the troops climb aboard. A major change in V2 is our troop loadouts now have weights to them. Each standard soldier loaded in the hip weighs 120 kilograms, so a full component of three squads totals 1,440 kilograms, or about 3,175 pounds. You can definitely feel the weight, and it's certainly very immersive that it's dynamically changing during drops and pickups. One opportunity for improvement, though, is during the hover pickups, you tend to drop because all of a sudden you're 3,000 pounds heavier and you can't really anticipate it by adding in more collective early. You just have to respond to it when it happens. I'm hoping in the future it changes to how it is for drop-offs, where the troops board the helicopter one by one and the weight is gradually applied. This will lengthen the duration of the hover, which would make for more fun and challenging flying. Directly overhead, a Mirage F1 is bombing some of the ground targets we're going after in our third and final troop landing. While I'm flying, I hear sporadic sonic booms of the jet as it's making its attack runs, and at the time I didn't know it was a friendly, so I had to assume it was a jet trying to find me. Unfortunately, the track file bugged out and shows me crashing into the valley wall. Luckily though, some viewers in the past have commented that they want to see cockpit views of landings, so I was recording them live as I did these drops. For this drop, there are two enemy camps, one on each side of the aircraft up in the clouds on the peaks to our left and right. I'm careful not to fly too high when I approach to land. You'll note I set the radar altimeter to 10 meters, and I find it's a great way to give you a few seconds warning you're going to touch down. You'll see it here in practice. Once the troops are off, we'll run back into the shelter of the valley, except this time, because I'm worried about the jet above us, I'm going to opt to hold a hover right in the clouds next to the valley wall. This should obscure us visually until it's time to pick up the troops. A few minutes later we get the indication that we destroyed the camps and it's time for pickup of our ground forces. Once again I'll opt for the hover pickup because the sonic booms are continuing. In fact you're going to hear another one when we line up to pick up the soldiers. The wind is coming from the south at 2 meters per second so I make my approach that way. It also lines up well with the orientation of the valley walls so I can use that as shelter until we need to spiral down for the final lineup. Once we get the troops on board, we're heading back to the FARP under the cover of the Mini Valleys in Sector 
about 20 minutes later we are back at the FARP and coming into land. We accomplished quite a bit during this sortie and destroyed seven enemy troop concentrations. Unfortunately when this was filmed, helicopter infantry drop kills didn't appear to count in the stats like they did in V1. Enigma knows about it and has told me that they'd work on it. But I'm not too worried, there's a lot more that they're tweaking and working on, so I'm just enjoying it all as is. I hope you guys enjoyed my first look at V2. It's not the typical full documentary style just because I wanted it to be more informative of some of the changes in regards to troop drops, and I also stupidly updated DCS to the new multi-threading update while gathering footage for this video, and that killed the track completely. I no longer could get access to the track to get more angles to film, which is normally what I do when I find events that I like. Despite all that, I hope it was enjoyable because this sortie was a lot of fun. I love mountain flying, and I think I mentioned that in every video, and to do it at the elevations that we were doing it at in this sortie was a lot of fun. Before we go, let's take a look at my first multi-threading sortie on Enigma's Cold War server in its entirety. I'm excited for the multi-threading update, and the performance gains that I've witnessed have been amazing. I can't wait to film the next documentary style video with the update because I think that there's going to be a noticeable gain in visual quality and reduction in FPS stutters that you've probably seen in some of my videos of the past. Well, that didn't last long. And as always, I want to end with a question, and of course, I'm curious to hear what your go-to mission set is now that Enigma's Cold War Server V2 is out. For me, I can't decide between the Spec Ops raids and the Troop Drops. Hopefully, we'll do a Spec Ops raid in the next video, and if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe with the channel notification so you can see when that drops. See you on the next one. Bye!